Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at how to remove elements from an AVL tree. And what you'll discover is that removing elements from an AVL tree is almost identical to removing elements from a regular binary search tree. So for the majority of this video, we're going to actually be looking at how to remove elements from a binary search tree and at the very end, augment that algorithm for AVL trees specifically. So let's get started. So just for review, I want to look at how to remove nodes in a binary search tree in detail. So we can generally break it up into two steps, finding and replacing. In the find phase, you find the elements you want to remove from the tree, if it exists, and then replace it with a successor node. The successor node is necessary for us to maintain the binary search tree invariant. More details on the find phase. This is when we're searching for the element in the tree to see if it exists. And basically four things can happen. First is we hit a null node, in which case we know that the value we're looking for doesn't exist. Our comparator returns a value of zero, meaning we found the node we want to remove. The comparator value is less than zero, so the value we're looking for, if it exists, is going to be found in the left subtree, or the comparator value is greater than zero, in which case the value, if it exists, is in the right subtree. So let's do an example of finding nodes in a binary search tree. Suppose we're looking for 14. Well, we should have a reference to the root node, so this is where we start. So we compare 20 and 14, and we know 14 is less than 20, so we go in the left subtree. We know 14 is greater than 10, so we go in the right subtree. We know 14 is less than 15, so we go in the left subtree. 14 is greater than 12, so the right subtree. And finally there, we found it, the node we were looking for. Now let's see what happens with a node that doesn't exist. So let's try and find 26. So again, we start at the root node, then we go to the right subtree because 26 is greater than 20, then we go to the left subtree because 26 is less than 31, then once we're at 25, we would go to the right subtree and then discover that 26 does not exist in the tree. So once we find the node, assuming it exists, we need to replace that node with its successor. The motivation for this is that if we just remove the node without finding a successor, then there'd be a gap in the tree. And when we're looking for a successor node, one of four cases will happen. Either we're a leaf node, in which case there are no subtrees. The node to remove has no left subtree. The node to remove has no right subtree or the node to remove has both a left subtree and a right subtree. We'll see how to handle all these cases. In the first case, where the node to remove is a leaf node, we can simply remove it without any side effects. The successor node in this case would be simply a null node. So suppose we want to remove node eight from this tree. The first thing we do is find out where eight is in the tree, so we'd go down the tree and then we'd found node eight. Then we discover that, oh, it's a leaf node, so we can just remove it like so. All right, now for cases two and three, where there's only a left or a right subtree, in these cases, the successor node is the immediate child of that left or right subtree. The reason the successor is the immediate node down from the node we're removing is that it is the next node which is either greater than it, in the case of a right subtree, or less than it, in the case of a left subtree. Let's do an example. Suppose we want to remove node nine. The first thing we do is find where node nine is in the tree. So start the root, and go to the right subtree and then find the node we want to remove, which is nine. And then we inspect nine and discover that it only has a left subtree. So the successor node is its immediate child on the left, so seven. So what we do is we get a reference to seven and then get ready to remove nine. 
and then we remove nine and then make seven the successor by linking it back up to five. And if we rebalance the tree, that's what it looks like. And node nine has been removed. So the last case is when the node we're trying to remove has both a left subtree and a right subtree. So the question in this case is, in which subtree will we find the successor of the node we're trying to remove? And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, the answer is both. The successor can either be the largest value in the left subtree or the smallest value in the right subtree. Once the successor node has been found in either that left or right subtree, we replace the value of the node to remove with a value in the successor node. However, the story doesn't end there. We must not forget to remove the duplicate value of the successor node that still exists in the tree. One common strategy to resolve this is to recursively call the function again, but with the value to remove as the value in the successor node. Let's see an example because this isn't completely trivial. Let's remove node seven from this tree which is the root node. So we would start at the root node and discover that in fact, this is the node we want to remove and notice that it has two non-empty subtrees. So we must choose a successor. To choose a successor, we either pick the smallest value in the right subtree or the largest value in the left subtree. Let's find the smallest value in the right subtree. And to do this, you would go to the right once and then dig as far left as possible. So now that we found the successor node 11, we would copy its value into the node we're trying to remove, which is the root node seven. Notice that now there are two instances of 11 in our tree and we want unique values in our tree. So to remove the 11 that is currently highlighted, we would recursively call our remove method, but on 11 this time. And luckily for us, this will always result in a case one, two or three removal. So to remove 11, we notice that it only has a right subtree. So its successor is its immediate right child. So we, we stage the removal and get ready to remove 11 that we remove 11 and then hook 14 back up to 18. And if we rebalance the tree, then we can see that the duplicate 11 value is gone. All right, the moment we've been waiting for, how do we augment the binary tree removal algorithm for AVL trees? The solution is simple. You only need to add two lines of code to ensure that the tree remains balanced and that the balance factor and height values remain up to date. On the recursive callback, you invoke the update and balance methods you saw in the insert video, which ensure that when the node is removed from the AVL tree, that the tree remains balanced. It's as easy as that. We'll have a look at how this is actually implemented in code in the next video, so stay tuned for that. You can also find some source code for the AVL tree on GitHub at github.com slash slash data dash structures. Thank you for watching. If you learned something, please like this video and subscribe for more computer science and mathematics videos.